Oh, hello. <laughs> I didn't know that you were watching, Vortex. I'm fixing to grab my Yamaha. Or maybe I'll play it in the grass. Or maybe it'll just chill with me in the grass. But guess what, you guys? I'm not smoking cigarettes. And, like, I forgot that I quit. I was like, fuck, what am I going to do on my break? You're going to do what you've always done. And fuck, would you look at that. I'm going to zoom in with this laptop. But I just scattered all my papers all over the fucking concrete. Um, that's fine, though. That's absolutely fine. Uh, so. I have a lot of stuff, y'all. I have a lot of stuff. I'm always leaving it behind and forgetting it and freaking out about it because I need it. I'm probably the craziest bitch that's ever worked at a Wendy's. I'm realizing this the longer that I go along. So, I'm trying not to talk about smoking because then I just think about it. And then it's like I just stay in that world where I obsess about it. So it's just better that I don't do that. There's still one cigarette butt over here. I guess the rest of them washed away. So I don't know where I'm supposed to be back inside. Like, I don't even know what time it really is. Because it says 4.50, but I know that's not right. <laughs> oh my god, you're so silly, girl. You're so silly. Look at this doll. <laughs> this me, or... This is is, I think. This is I. Is. <laughs> I am, I'm stoned. I'm pretty stoned. Can I forget about that? About how, like, if I don't smoke cigarettes, like, it, I'm just extra high. Because that's not, like, taking away my high. I feel like if you're not, like, totally addicted to cigarettes and you don't, like, sit around and chain smoke, then y you might get higher, like, when you smoke a cigarette, like, it might boost your high, but it does the opposite for me, since I'm a chain smoker, so. Don't I look so, so urban? Don't I look so 90s? Whatever. And it's funny, because, like, my manager owed me money, Cause like I bummed him a bunch of cigarettes and he was like, I'll just buy you a pack of cigarettes. And he said he was going to do that the other night. And I just ended up going out and buying cigarettes on my own. Right. And I was worried about that. Like I was worried when I came into work that he was going to have cigarettes for me, but he had this instead. And I was like, that's really funny that you just gave me the money. Cause I was like debating in my head. I was like, if he gives you cigarettes, like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna smoke them? Are you gonna be strong? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna smoke them? Are you gonna be strong? <laughs> like, yeah, I, uh, I loaned this bitch a dollar in my in my drive-through because she didn't have money that she thought she had. So I told her that I got it. So I know that I'm gonna need to put a dollar into the drawer. Yeah, because that's how good of a person I am. Really. <laughs> it's just a dollar. Um, but now I have five extra bucks that I really didn't expect my manager to give me, so that's good, right? 
five bucks to not smoke anymore. Where's your toothpick at? I don't know. Let me get it out of my jeans pocket. Yeah, but, uh, I feel like I can't succeed the way that I want to in my head, so I needed to stop aiming for that. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get there, but hopefully I can get a little closer, right? See, I just don't know how to use something in the best possible way. Because, you know, whenever you come up with something and you're like, this is really smart, or this is clever, or whatever, or like, this this, this could make a lot of sense to a lot of people, maybe, possibly, I hope so. Um, I just like to be optimistic with the things that I have to say. But I shouldn't be, because, like, I should know by now that most people are really stupid and don't even understand satire, so... <laughs> But I've been practicing this one song. And I think I need to perform this one song since I've been doing it so much. But... It's ridiculous, though. It's like... It sounds like it's a song about hating women. And then it sounds like it's a song about hating men. And then... I, th I think that the audience is going to figure out, you know, she just hates fucking everybody and we need to get over it because all of us are shit. So I feel like men and women in their own ways are uh, sort of like, I mean, they're trained to behave in, in certain ways. And I'm sure that they do like, I mean, men and women are different, you know, like, I don't think that that's. It's stupid to be like, yeah, we're equal. I mean, we're equal to each other. Like, that doesn't mean that we're the same. I feel like that's dangerous to think like that. Because I almost died when I was, like, a drunk. And I drank like a man. So, you know, feminism could have killed me of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Can y'all hear that at all? See, I really don't know what time I'm supposed to be back, y'all. I think it was like 6.46 or something. So go back at like 7.15, which would be 5.15 on this clock. <laughs> all right, all right. I see all hear this. Maybe I should just wait for the right words and try and instead of trying to talk. <laughs> you know? Because I feel like maybe if I just wait. I'll come up with the right thing that I need to say and then be off to a great start. Well, you have it in your head though, like, because there's nobody there. There's nobody expecting shit from you. Everybody has this problem, Amy. It's not just you. And it's not just because of your borderline personality. Yeah, but you do know that it has a lot to do with that, right? Of course I know that, but just don't use it as fucking reasons to just not do it, you know? Fuck them, man. They don't get it, they don't get it. There's nothing you can do. 
it's not your responsibility to like change people. It's your your responsibility to try. If it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. So I, I just have a lot of problems with uh, the way that women behave. And so as a woman, I feel like I need to say these things on my mind. You want to fight sexism? Stop buying beauty products. Quit shaving. Throw away your makeup. Don't shower for two weeks. Eat a tub of ice cream out of spite for the patriarchy. Talk about every shit you take for the purpose of being unladylike. Stop holding in your farts. Just let them go, girls. Let them go. See, the thing is, when I play this, oh, that's cute. There was a dog that was like, sticking his head out the window. That makes me so happy when I see that. I feel like that dog right now. Anyway. <laughs> it's like I get in this rhythm, but every time that I try to perform in front of people or this, this fucking vortex, it's like I can't stay in the groove. I always end up changing it because my brain's like, no. You're going to fuck it up on purpose. Okay. You want to fight sexism? Stop buying beauty products. See? Yeah, yeah, because you're doing something with your, like, you're singing. That's good. That's good because it's it's easy. It's just simple. Okay, you got to sit up. You got to sit up and really, really show yourself, you know, really show yourself. Hello, Vortex. I'm here to perform you a song all about my feelings on the feminist movement. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do not blow away. You're an awesome song, and people need to hear you. Here, just put some on it. There you go. You want to fight sexism, stop buying beauty products, quit shaving, throw away your makeup, don't shower for two weeks, eat a tub of ice cream, out of spite for the patriarchy, talk about every shit you take, all for the purpose of being a lady like, stop holding in your farts, just let them go, girls, let them go. And, uh, you know, we females, we got assholes too, don't you know, don't you know, and not just for you to demonstrate how you dominate, bruh. So I work harder than every man I know. I work harder than every man we know. I work harder than every man you know. Then again, you know a lot of Mexicans Never mind, one Mexican is the equivalent of 25 Americans combined. Of course you want to kick them out, because that's what you're all about, being a fucking lazy ass piece of shit. That's pretty, that's as far as I got. <laughs> I, yeah, it's funny, because I, I turned it, like, it was originally, I was mad at feminists for playing that victim again you know just being like oh well 
like, why are men over us? Like, maybe because you talk like that. Yeah, yeah. I can't stand it when women talk like that. It's so obnoxious, man. And I feel bad because I'm like, can they help this? You know, like, is, is this something like a choice that they make, like a conscious decision where they're like, I'm going to talk really annoying. I mean, there's some people that t have that voice, but it's cute. But there are, like, a lot of people that have that voice that are just fucking, just, you want to punch them. You want to punch them the whole time that they open their mouth. You know, and I'm sure you want to do that to me, too. And that is absolutely fine. That's the thing. I don't, this is why I talk so much shit. Because I talk so much shit about myself, and you can talk as much shit as you want about me. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They're just fucking words, baby boo. <laughs> oh, shit. You hear that awesome beat? I'm just trying to formulate ideas at this point. It's stupid because I've already formulated so many. I really don't need to do any more. <laughs> I, I crack myself up very easily, you guys. I bet you nobody else in this entire world can make me laugh as hard as I can make myself laugh. Now, I'm sure that's true of every comedian. Because, like, you have to be able to make yourself laugh. And you have to be able to poke fun at yourself. And you also have to let other people poke fun at you. That's kind of a requirement. So, if you can't let other people make fun of you, you're probably not funny. Just to let you know. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. How can you make a joke if you can't take a joke? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I know that I've got a pretty wicked sense of humor, because I don't ever get offended by anything that you want to say to me, or about me, or behind my back, or right in front of me. I, a lot of people, they don't know how to just confront me, even though I'm probably the sweetest old gal that you're ever going to meet. You know, probably the most genuine, probably the most compassionate, probably the most empathetic little bitch you'll ever meet. I wouldn't give away pot cookies if I weren't a good person. I really don't know people that just give away pot that are just bad, you know, looking to corrupt the youth, you know. Not me. It's true. It's true. I'm a good person. But I realize that truly good people don't have to constantly reiterate, I'm a good person. <laughs> you know, they don't have to keep proving it. They don't have to keep going back and retracting things that they said at one time. You know, I uh, can't help it. I just say whatever comes to my mind and you don't have to like it because I'm bound to change my mind in like five minutes or less. <laughs> That's more of an example of what I can do. Just that right there, just kind of like on the spot. But that's because I've been recording for about 20 minutes and so I, I got into my little groove or whatever the fuck. Well, you have to keep doing it in order for that to, to get quicker, you know, in order for yourself to be more relaxed when you're up there. Yeah, this is a good one, though. He rants about women, men, and Americans once again. And how they are fucking shit compared to Mexicans in the way that they work. I was really just saying that about the president, but I do feel like most Americans are pretty fucking lazy. So, uh, 
I know this because I work with a lot of them. Not all of them. Because there are plenty of Americans that I've met that, are, that aren't lazy at all. But, you know, they have psychological problems. So that's what's keeping them going. People don't realize this about it. Like, if they knew that, like, being crazy could, like, make you a better worker, being crazy could make you shred guitar like a motherfucker, if being crazy could make you come up with, like, the best thoughts you've ever thought in your entire life and really help people, then, you know, I feel like people would change their minds about it and be like, you know, maybe I should flush my medication down the toilet. Maybe I should fire my shrink. Uh, that's what I, I, I think that more people would... Like, if they just realize that, like, holy shit. Like, there's so much that I could do with this. I'm just going to have to cry a little bit more. I'm going to have to get used to crying. <sighs> Should I be my smoking though, man? I'm supposed to be getting some black pepper oil in the mail. I ordered it online, y'all. Because they don't have it at grocery stores. <laughs> gonna get like a little little bottle just tell yourself it's like liquid acid or something and then you'll get fucked up from like the placebo effect <laughs> you should tell other people that too because that would be really funny and maybe they would get fucked up off the placebo effect ha huh, i'm a jokester <laughs> this ain't real lsd you just wish see i just dream you know like, so I was thinking today, cause like today I had a craving to drink alcohol and it was like the first like craving to drink alcohol that I've had in like a long ass time. Cause I've been sober for a little while now. Um, so here's what happened. My coworker, they call us like partners in crime, which is funny because like, I almost kind of think that's racist because she's black and I'm like the only white person that she likes working with. And so they call us partners in crime. I'm like, what? It's like, we, we're both black. Is that why like you're calling us that? Like, I don't know. Cause uh, yeah, I think that she considers me the same, which is good. Cause I don't, I don't like being white. I hate being white. Like every time that I fill out a job application and there's that, you know, a uh, race ethnicity part of the application, you know, where it's like, check off which box you are. Are you African American? Are you Pacific Islander? Are you Caucasian? I never want to check the Caucasian box. So yeah, that's how I feel about it. Anyway, what was I saying? She texted me at like three o'clock in the morning, like yesterday, like begging me to come to work today. I was like, bitch, I really need the fucking money. Like, I'm not gonna, like, refuse to show up today. I'm surprised that I haven't gotten in trouble for this shit. I, like, I feel bad about that in a way. In another way, I kind of feel like it's, it's like a restaurant and everybody kind of does this thing where they fuck people over. Not intentionally, but, um, what was I saying about Tina? I don't fucking know. You were talking about, <laughs> no idea what you're talking about, man. <laughs> but she hates it. Like she hates working here when I'm not here. She just. Maybe you were talking about being black. <laughs> I don't know. No, I wanted a drink. I wanted a drink because Miss Tina was pouring. Like, we have these. I'm drinking one right now. I don't know why I'm drinking it because it's really not that good. It's just like. I tell myself it's healthy because it's tea. It's like, it's green tea mixed with like strawberry passion fruit juice. And we also have like a mango passion fruit juice. And she was pouring the mango into the container that it's supposed to go in. And it was like all like slushied, slushied out. 
And it just like reminded me of like margaritas and it just made me like really, really super badly want to drink like a fucking margarita. Like right then and there, I was just like, fuck, like I want that right now. It's crazy. Like I usually don't want to drink when I'm around other people. That's like the last thing that makes me want to drink. Just like being in a fucking bar. But then I like have like a vicious craving when I see like mango passion fruit slushy on the counter at my work. <laughs> like I, I don't understand like why it would come on so strong about something like that. Cause I, I never drank margaritas. I think I've, I, I've consumed maybe like two margaritas in my entire life. Cause I wasn't like, you know, like a fun, like let's go out. Cause I feel like there are different scales of drunk and like, you should do that because you know, you've seen it, especially being in the program of AA. That's Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a cult, y'all. <sighs> it is. I don't know anybody that goes to church that many times a week. It's just like another addiction. But it's okay, though. I mean, I, I feel like it's better than being addicted to fucking alcohol and drugs and shit. But, like, it's not... I don't know. I mean, it's not going to kill you. That's the thing. If you keep drinking and doing drugs, that'll kill you. But if you keep going to meetings, that, that'll just... I feel like it'll just keep you crazy, though. And you'll think that you're, like, getting healthier. That's the trick about it. But I feel like people that have the natural disposition to, you know, think a lot about stuff and just analyze the fuck out of things and beat themselves up and lash out at other people or lash in and harbor resentments like i feel like it's it's not really beneficial for them to go to aa or whatever like 12-step program like i i just think that like i already do enough like excessive scrutiny like i don't i really don't need help and i most certainly don't need to look at it with like the spiritual axiom or whatever the fuck like just it just kind of makes it ridiculous like and I already, I already can make things ridiculous in my head so like I don't need yeah I don't need help from it so like me having a craving to drink like when I see some slush spill all over the place like that that's just so random and weird and I don't know, it just, it comes on when you least expect it. But. It's just like, like, whenever I have that craving to drink, it's always like, and this is exactly what went through my mind. I was like, you just want to pretend that you're a different person. That you're like, you want to pretend that you're the kind of person that drinks fucking margaritas. <laughs> like, I heard, I think I drank tequila, like, yeah, like, maybe three times. Like, I think it was like one of those liquors that like I experimented with you know and I was like wow this isn't working I'm just gonna go back to vodka <laughs> so the thing with vodka you can drink a lot of it and it doesn't seep through your pores and it doesn't I feel like vodka is a lot easier to take because it's just like straight like gasoline pretty much it doesn't have like some nasty ass taste to it along with that really icky like alcohol you know like any alcoholic drink is going to be strong because there's alcohol but you know unless it's like beer or wine or something because they I don't know I feel like it is like really interesting like how they're all made and processed and all that shit you know I feel like it's artistic in one way and another way it's just you know enabling people to die of alcoholism <laughs> See, that's the thing I was thinking about that in relation to guns now I know what you're thinking Vortex like well with alcohol you only hurt yourself like with a gun you, you can hurt other people but 
but it's it's just like there's so many things out there that can kill people and it's like I don't know all this shit about gun control it kind of worries me just because I know how crazy the NRA people are <laughs> that's why it, that's why it worries me I have a friend that's in the NRA and she's nuts <laughs> Shout out to Miss Donna, I love you. She needs to call me Living New. <laughs> like God, if she had any idea how fucking offensive I was being on stage. I don't I don't think she wanna associate with me anymore, you know? Or maybe she would, I don't know. She has a a thing on her car. Like on her license plate that says, Eternity will be hell without Jesus. <laughs> and I wonder if like she knew that like I wasn't a Christian. I didn't believe all that shit. But she she still loved me. She still treated me like I was like one of her kids. I worked with her at Steak and Shake. I work really well with people, I've noticed. But she thought I was hilarious. Everybody thinks I'm hilarious. You people that don't like me. Sorry, I just felt like throwing a stick at you, Vortex. I'm gonna go. Okay? I want to save this stick now. I don't know why I want to save it. It just feels like something that I should hoard. <laughs> uh, I'm so funny. I'm so funny. I'm so funny. But it's still not going to make me any money. Still not going to make me any money. Still not going to make me any money. Money, 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 money. I'm not going to hoard the stick. I just decided against it. I'm sorry. I think that you should be with all your other stick friends. I think that you should be with your nature buddies. I found like a little dog, like not, not an actual dog. Um, not like it looked like a little figurine or something. I found it in the Kroger parking lot the other night when I was, that, when I shot the video and I was crying. Um, I found that this little, it looked like it could be like a little like monopoly piece or something. But it was like a little dog. And it was like in the parking space where I was. I was like, holy shit, like I was supposed to find this. And so now like I take it with me everywhere. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I don't think it's that crazy. It's just like, I just find stuff and I feel like it's supposed to be important. Uh, and I think that like most people just like don't look at things like that. They don't have the same perspective that I do where it's like, man, maybe this was supposed to happen to me, man. Like this, I was supposed to find this. I was supposed to learn this. I was supposed to figure this out. You know, my life's a hell of a lot more interesting because of it. Because I can constantly keep myself entertained with this like what if shit, you know, but it's also really devastating because of the fact that I'm so isolated from the world because I'm so busy like with this. Uh, uh, circus. Like, just imagine a circus. Like, all the elephants and, like, the all the crazy people and, like, the, the dude that's, like, a snake. Or, like, the woman that's, like, a half snake or whatever. And then there's, like, like all the mirrors that are fucked up and, and uh, people on trapezes and stuff. Like, that's in my head all the time. Like, constant. It's Stuff is always up going on up here. Go back inside, god damn it. Okay. See, it's fucking October and it's still like really hot outside. Fuck Tennessee, man. Fuck Tennessee. Oh, global warming isn't real. What the fuck is that? Yeah, I really do have to go. Bye. 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 Bye.